glaciers. They are another indicator of our changing climate. At more than 14,000 feet high, many of those glaciers are found here, high on Mount Rainier. The entire mountain turns red. It's late summer and there's been melting. And when the entire mountain turns blue, that's when you have a lot of snowfall. These top-down images taken by two satellites in stereo from 2014 through 2017. It allows scientists to quickly measure the glaciers on Mount Rainier. The images include 2015, the winter of record low snowpack. What shows up as black is rock. Not just measuring the surface, but trying to understand why the surface is changing. Assistant Professor David Sheen plays an important role in understanding our shrinking glaciers, but be careful about making assumptions about his role in climate change. I'm not a climatologist, no, I'm a remote sensing expert. So a lot of this glacier work is happening here on the campus of the University of Washington in the Department of Civil and Environmental Engineering. From the University of Washington to the National Park Service, which for a century has documented changes in glaciers from Mount Rainier to the Olympics to North Cascades National Parks. This is Banded Glacier in the North Cascades in 1960. By 2016, it is largely reduced to a lake. This was Lillian Glacier in 1905 in the Olympic Mountains. By 2010, it's gone. Anderson Glacier also in the Olympics in 1936 and finally 2015. While scientists have been documenting the shrinking areas covered by glaciers in the three national parks for over a century, the rate of melt and loss has accelerated over the past 40 years. In Olympic National Park, 43% of what was there in the 1970s is gone by 2015. The North Cascades losing nearly 20%, most of that since 1977. Mount Rainier lost 14% since 1971, but consider that much of its glacial ice is at a much higher and colder altitude. Yet even there, lower level glaciers have suffered more significant loss, say glaciologists with the National Park Service. Here on the left is an image from 1959, and here on the right an image from 2014. And in 1958 or 59, you can see the glacier extended down to South Cascade Lake here. Max Stevens is a glaciologist. He's with the U.S. Geological Survey, and one glacier in particular in the Northern Cascades is a benchmark. Ironically, it's called the South Cascade Glacier. So South Cascade Glacier is about the, twice the size of Green Lake, and it's uh, about 650 feet thick, so that's more or less the height of the Space Needle. Uh, and each year, we're taking about two feet off of the top of that. In 2004, we loaned a small camera to scientists making their late summer visit. And this is the meltwater in a particularly bad year. South Cascade Glacier is one of five benchmark glaciers the agency has been closely studying, this one for over 60 years. Three other glaciers are in Alaska, one is in Montana. But it's what's learned on these glaciers that tells a bigger story. So here's a year that it had gained some mass, but on the whole, the mass has decreased. But for the geological survey, they are also studying the inside of the glaciers, drilling holes, weighing ice, and setting up weather stations to get a year-round picture. The glaciers are a big part of the water resources in, in the Northwest. Scientists say there are two important aspects of glacial measurement, how long they are, the area covered, and how thick and heavy they are. Sheen is using drones along with satellites to map that all out with precision over a much wider number of glaciers. So combining the, the LIDAR measurements, the laser measurements with the camera measurements will allow us to make the most detailed observations of our glaciers yet. We're measuring very precise changes in the glacier surface over time. And what we can do with that is we can take that information and figure out how much ice and snow exists in the system. He can now even measure snow levels from old photos taken from airplanes. We call this the digital glacier time machine. In Washington, glaciers matter. On the Skagit River, glacial melt accounts for 12% of the river's flow. That cold water is critical for salmon, especially in the summer. It also helps generate electricity. Glaciers, part of our ecosystem, extending down from high up in the mountains, and they are in trouble. Glenn Farley, King 5 News.